Now we may see one more example on non-recursive algorithm. That is example number three. In the example number three, I have taken an example of matrix multiplication. Here I am multiplying a matrix called as A, okay, from another matrix called as B. And this both matrix are having a size or a dimension n into n. Okay. Now I have stored that multiplied value in another matrix called as C here. Okay, C contains the multiplied value of these two matrices. Now I have to apply here dot or product. Okay. Now how to do the uh, method, uh, how to do the multiplication actually? You have to take the scalar value of this row and multiply each element in this column here. That means I have to take the first element of the row, first row, multiply the first element of the first column here. Then second element of second element of second column of the first row and second row of the first column. Like that the process continues here. Okay, you have to read from row here, you have to read from column here and multiply. Whenever you multiply all the elements, you have to submit. When you submit, you got the result of one element here. For example, if I want to calculate the ith row and the jth column here, I have to I multiply each and every element from each and every element of this one, which is nothing but C of i j, which will be explained by here the formula here. In the next step, I will explain how actually the algorithm works. Here I have written matrix multiplication alg algorithm which will accept two input, that is matrix A and matrix B. The purpose of this algorithm is to multiply two square matrices of order n by de definition, sorry, for definition based algorithm. The input is actually two matrices that is n into n size or dimension. And the output for this one is the matrix C which is multiplication of A and B. For this one we need three for loops nested for loops. Okay, in the outer for loop it is work like a row by row and inner for loop J actually implemented like a column here. Okay, one row and one column is taken from I and J here. Okay, initially that C are actually made elements are empty because zero here. Next, I have used one more for loop called as K. It is also starting from zero to n minus one. All the for loop starting from zero to n minus one. Okay, at the inner for loop. I am doing some here multiplication here. What actually it will do? Take the first element here and multiply with here. Okay. And whatever the result is there, it is stored in the C of IG. Then take the second element, take the second element of the here and add, add it to the previous summation. Like that the process continue here like this way. So K is the no here work like a column. In the A K work like a column. First row, first column, first row, second column, first row, third column. Like that here K works like a column. And in the B section the K work like a row. First row, first column, second row first column like that and it is incremented and multiply each and every element here whatever the multiplication is there it is sum, sum with the previous summation and you got the total summation in the CIJ this is for one element like that you have to increment the J value to get the second row element okay 
whenever the j incrementates it is you are getting the row element and i is actually used for sorry i j is actually used for column element and i is actually used for row element okay like that this algorithm works now we have to identify or analyze this algorithms okay First, we have to identify the input size. It's nothing but the order of the matrix that is n. As the n increases, matrix size also increases. Okay. Here, then we have to identify the basic operation of the algorithm. As I already told, the basic operations are mostly available inside the for loop. So here, if you see properly, here there are two arithmetic operations. Are there? And the one of these may be the basic operation. One is addition, and another one is multiplication. Okay. If you are, if I ask you which one is the basic operation, it's very simple. It will take more number of time. The addition will be executed faster compared to the multiplication. So I will consider this multiplication as the basic operation. Okay. This will execute or consume more time in the algorithm. In next step, we have to identify the worst case as well as the best case is there in the algorithm. But this multiplication algorithm works for n minus 1 times. There is no any premature break in the algorithm. So there is no any best case in this algorithm. So, what may be the worst case or our execution efficiency here? Okay. Now, when we simplify it using the summation formula, I found, we found that I this is the for outer for loop, this is inside for loop, and this is the again inside for loop, which is here k is equal to zero. Start from k is equal to zero and minus one. K is equal to zero and minus one i is equal to 0 and minus 1. So, this is the three for loops and one indicates the basic operation here. When you simplify it, you found that it is nothing but n. Okay, it is k is actually starting from 0. Okay, actually it is n minus 1 plus 1. When you simplify it, when you simplify this one inner for loop, you got n minus 1 plus 1. Here 1 and 1 are cross out. You have only n. So that is written here. Okay. Now, when you simplify again this, j is equal to 0 and n minus 1. When you simplify again, you again got one more n. When you simplify this uh, inner loop, you again got one more n. That is nothing but n into n n into n is nothing but n square here. Okay. n into n is nothing but n square. Again, when you solve the outer for loop, you may, you get one more n. So, the result is n cube. As it itself indicates, this multiplication formula actually n cube storage space here. Okay. Sorry, st not storage. Here actually n cube Execution time. Okay. 